Good morning, guys. It is Thursday morning on uh, June 30th, Thursday, June 30th. And uh, today is day number three of um, my attempt at vlogging for five days in a row to show you guys what um, life as a freelance illustrator is like or what my life as a freelance illustrator is like. Um, and I thought I should go ahead and just reintroduce myself in case um, any of you are new. My name is Kendall Hillegas and I'm a freelance illustrator from Boston, Massachusetts. And yeah, as I mentioned, I'm trying to vlog for a few days this week just to give you guys a little picture into the kind of work I do, which is primarily food illustration, but I also do um, some botanical illustration and scientific illustration and plants and animals and um, and people as well and um, and then some kind of odds and ends stuff um, like website design and print design so um, this seemed like a good week to do it because I'm working on a couple of uh, well one larger project and another um, another smaller one and like two other smaller ones so um, just would give a good idea of the kind of variety that um, that I'm usually working on but anyway today um, I'm back at the same project that you've seen me working on for the past two days which is though that collection of 14 illustrations 14 food illustrations which are going to be used in a video game um, and uh, since they're due tomorrow morning um, I have to finish them today and I think six of them are completely done and um, then there's eight that are like most of the way done but need little bits um, little finishing touches so I'll be working on those eight and then I have to scan all 14 and then get them all ready to um, to send to the client so um, that's going to be that's priority number one today and if I have time to do other stuff I may um, I may tackle some of these other smaller projects um, but yeah I've just been kind of fitting those in um, in the evenings and in in spare minutes between um, between the time I've spent on this bigger ones so uh, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that and hope you guys enjoy seeing some of the process So it is about 1.30, I think, maybe 2, and I have finally finished all 14 of these illustrations. And they're all going to need some cleaning up and editing once I get them scanned, but I am really happy overall with how they turned out. I think probably this one and this one and maybe even the salad. I think probably those three are my favorite. Um, but yeah, this was a super fun project to work on and I can't wait to see how it comes together. So all of these, um, all of the work in progress shots for each of these will be featured um, on my Tumblr and Instagram and those will come out in the next couple of weeks and um, then once the video game comes out I'll be sure to post links to that too I don't know too much about it just that the um, just what the client has told me so um, no real details but um, I know that that will be forthcoming at some point soon um, what else was I gonna say about that oh also I wanted to mention um, that just because you've seen kind of like the coming together of the project over the past few days. Um, and a question I get frequently is about how long it takes me to do an illustration or how long the project takes. And I did want to be um, transparent about the fact that I've been working on these for like two and a half or three weeks already. So you saw kind of the coming together of the final stage, but 
there was a lot of work that went before that. So it wasn't like I was able to just, um, you know, bang out 14 illustrations in, in three days. So um, definitely has been a long project, but uh, a good one so far. Um, so now I have to um, hop on the computer uh, and scan all the illustrations. And um, that should take about 30 or 40 minutes. My scanner has been acting a little funny lately. Um, and usually when it does that, it's just because there's an update to the driver, but um, there isn't an update. So I don't know, I've, I've talked about this scanner before and I love it, um, but it may be on its way out. I've had it for like almost three years, but I would still totally buy the same scanner again. So um, we'll see, hopefully it will work today because I kind of need it to given the fact that I'm under a deadline, but um, all right, I'm gonna start scanning. So I'm all done with scanning, and before I jump on the computer to um, to start prepping and processing the images, I wanted to take a minute to answer a question that I got from um, somebody on Instagram, and it's about uh, using Gamsol to blend colored pencils. Um, and um, I, I can't quite pronounce her username, um, but I will put it on the screen, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a screen cap of the photo she sent as well and basically she's having a hard time um, getting soft core colored pencils to blend with Gamsol the way that um, the way that she sees me do it in videos. So uh, there are a few different possibilities for what could be going wrong um, and I'm gonna try to mention all of them. So um, as you can see here I'm just kind of laying out some swatches of colored pencil and trying to use similar colors to what she used. So the first issue is one that I'm not going to be able to, the first potential issue of something that could be going wrong is one that I won't be able to demonstrate because I don't have this kind of paper on hand. But um, she did mention that she was using mixed media paper with watercolor brushes. So um, a possibility there is that a lot of mixed media papers are um, really, really smooth. And as you can see, this paper has a lot of texture to it. Um, and for blending colored pencils, unless you're gonna use a, um, a printmaking paper, I feel like it's better to have one that has a lot of tooth to it because that can hold on to the pigment. Um, and another possibility is just that it's not a good paper. So I don't know what brand, um, what brand she's using, but it could be that it's not a great paper in and of itself. And paper makes a world of difference. Now that's not to say that you have to use a super fancy or super expensive paper. I've certainly used more affordable papers, um, throughout, um, throughout my career, but um, some affordable papers are much better than other affordable papers, so you definitely do need to, to try and experiment. And sometimes papers even change, paper manufacturers change the way they are making their paper. So there was one time that I was using this paper that was like really great, it was very affordable, it was a Canson paper, but then all of a sudden um, the paper manufacturer changed the recipe or changed how they were making it, um, but it became really not good anymore and I had to stop using it. So, um, could be the paper, you could maybe need to just try a different paper. Um, it also could be a combination of different things. So, um, aside from paper, it's possible that um, you mentioned that you were using a watercolor brush. And this, I have a little round watercolor brush right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to blend this one with the watercolor brush and some Gamsol. Um, so as you can see with the watercolor brush, it is super, super soft. You see how bendy it is? Now I am able to blend it somewhat, but I've mentioned this in other videos. For blending pencils, I really strongly prefer brushes that are meant for acrylic. As you can see with this one, I'm going to try the same thing. The bristles are a lot stiffer and I can kind of move it around in different ways than I could with the watercolor brush. So I would opt for trying an acrylic brush um, as opposed to the watercolor brush. And you can use either a round or another shape I really like is a filbert, really good for blending. I tend to use filberts probably most of the time and only go for rounds if, um, if it's something that has smaller details that I wanna blend. 
but yeah, as you can see, that was just one layer there, and um, and I was able to get a pretty good gradient going on. So another possibility is that, um, as you can see, this one I made the pigment, I made the pencil a bit thinner than I did in this one, um, but that's going to make it harder to blend, just because there isn't as much stuff to move around, and you're going to get way more of the paper peek through. And I'm guessing this is probably some of what you're dealing with just based on the picture, because as you can see the difference between this and this, this has a lot more laid down and the way I did that was just by pushing harder with the pencil. In that I was able to get a much nicer blending gradient than I was with this one. Um, and that's another reason why it's important to have the textured paper because the paper can hang on to a lot of pigment as in this example here. Um, and another possibility is that um, you've got the colors kind of lined up one after another, but there isn't any overlap. So um, you might want to try having a bit more overlap between the colors. And that can kind of help facilitate the blending. And then... Um, Boy, it looks like I made more swatches than I actually needed, but I'll go ahead and blend these guys too. The final possibility, and it really could be some combination of all, all of these issues that I've mentioned, but the final possibility is that to me it looks like you just have one layer down so far. And for blending colored pencils, I find that I pretty much always have to do multiple layers. So, um, you might want to try, sometimes I'll do a lighter layer like this at the beginning and then add heavier on top once I kind of know where I'm going and can have that, um, have that color built up. Um, so in order to do that, you really need to let it dry between layers, but I'm kind of in a rush since this is just a little demo. So I'm just going to show you what happens on this one since this is the most dry when I add more layer on top, more, a heavier layer on top. And I'm going to go ahead and do some blending in between. So I'm just pushing, not as hard as I can, but pretty hard. And I'm going over it a few times. But again, you really should let, <laughs> you really should let it dry if you're working on a finished piece, just because it can be hard on the paper um, if you try to come back in before it's dry. Okay, and you can already see I'm getting more of a gradient there just because that, that base has been blended. And so now when I go back over it, I'm able to get a really nice, soft, blended look. And I could blend out all the edges if I wanted to as well, but um, just trying to kind of look at that center area and see how nice and blended it is. So see what a big difference between one layer and two layers. And that was just really quick. So um, yeah, it could be any one of those things or some combination of those things. So I would just suggest um, doing some experimentation, maybe trying different paper, maybe trying different brush. Um, trying adding more layers and um, maybe putting some heavier layers down um, when you do add those as well. So um, that's it and I hope that's helpful. Um, all right, now I'm going to move on to doing some stuff um, with editing the 14 illustrations on the computer. All right, so um, just getting ready to do some editing here and I wanted to show you first what the images look like directly from the scanner. So they're they're in sideways because I didn't bother to flip them around in the scan. I can just do that afterwards in the um, in Pixelmator. But yeah, this is how they look immediately after scanning. So I'm gonna have to remove all this white area and then clean up the edges and then in some cases tweak the colors just because they do change a little bit um, in scanning and sometimes I feel like they can look not quite as rich as they do in real life. So um, to be scanning, um, or excuse me, to edit them, I'm gonna be using this program that I've mentioned before called Pixelmator. And since I have a lot to do, I think I'm gonna use my trusty old little Wacom um, bamboo tablet. I am using my um, iPad Pro a lot, but just for 
plain old editing, I feel like it's quicker still for me to just plug the tablet in and, um, and work in Pixelmator. Um, and then after I send the images to the client, they'll still have another opportunity to um, ask for changes. And at this point, the changes that they could request will be really small. Um, but still like I give them the opportunity. So earlier on in the process, they would have had a chance to say like, oh, I don't want, I don't want my illustration to, I don't want the illustration to have chives on it, or I want the egg yolk to be moved to the left or whatever. So the big kind of compositional changes um, would have already taken place at one of the earlier iterations. Um, but um, as far as small changes, like the uh, example of a small change would be like, if the client wanted to um, add another shadow on this chive or um, add some more shading over here or add more highlights over there, those kind of small changes um, would be what I would do at this point. And for that, I, um, I, will, I would likely end up using the iPad Pro. So kind of a combination of things. But um, yeah, that's, that's what the plan is. So um, I've gone in depth into how I edit things in another video, which I will link on the screen here, but I'm just gonna kind of record it and leave it going and, um, and yeah, you can watch the process a little bit. I might switch to a screen recording, but, um, but yeah, if you want a detailed description of how I do the editing and how I remove the background and stuff, um, that will be in another video, which I will link to on the screen and in the description box. All right. have to put together um, some low-res PDF proofs that I can send to the client in the morning. Um, so I'll do that and then um, hopefully hear back from them uh, tomorrow uh, about whether they want any other edits or changes. Uh, for today it's about 3.30 um, and I'm getting my hair cut soon so I'm gonna take a break and go get a snack and get ready to get my hair cut um, and then this evening I probably will be doing some editing of these vlogs um, yeah and then that, I think that should work out well because then tomorrow I'll be able to get started on the, um, the private commission that I'm working on and keep working on that website so um, getting towards the end here I will maybe vlog when I'm getting my hair cut if my hairdresser is okay with it but it's really not very exciting. I'm pretty boring and I just like get it trimmed and don't really do anything to it. So um, yeah, so I'll do that and I guess if there's anything else interesting that happens I'll vlog it but I feel like my days are pretty boring so um, especially on a week like this where I'm really just buckling down to work and not actually doing many things um, outside of that. So, uh, yeah, so if this is goodbye for today, then I will see you tomorrow. And, um, if not, then I will see you when I see you. All right.